Good morning. It is my privilege on behalf of the faculty and staff of Dickinson State University to declare the spring 2018 commencement open. Please be seated. Good morning. I am Dr. Carmen Wilson, and I have the privilege of serving as the Provost and Vice President of Academic and Student Affairs here at Dickinson State University. Graduating students, family, and friends of our students, honored guests, faculty, staff members, welcome to Dickinson State University's 2018 Spring Commencement Ceremony. The processional music was provided by the DSU Jazz Ensemble, conducted by Dr. Jeremy Wolitz, DSU Assistant Professor of Music. The flags, oh, yeah, let's give them a hand. The flags displayed on the stage today represent the graduates' respective home countries and the tribal flags of our American Indian graduates, as well as our own North Dakota flag and DSU flag. Eight flags of countries are represented today. They are Canada, Australia, Ethiopia, Zimbabwe, Japan, Nepal, Nigeria, and of course, the USA. Three American Indian tribes represented are the Navajo, Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe, Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewa. Graduating students, today is your day. Today's ceremony represents the conferral of your academic degree. It marks the completion of Dickinson State University's academic program of studies, but not the end of your education or a journey of lifelong learning. We applaud your hard work and determination to reach this important academic milestone. Congratulations, and let the journey begin. At this time, I would like to introduce the platform party. I ask that they stand when I call their name. Please hold your applause until all have been introduced. Mr. Marty Parsons, Vice President for Finance and Administration. Ms. Alicia Erickson, Alumni Representative. Dr. Thomas Mitzel, 12th President of Dickinson State University. And Mr. Nick Hacker, Board Member of the North Dakota State Board of Higher Education. Our signer for guests and students who are hearing impaired is Ms. Ann Robbins. After retiring from academic positions, outstanding faculty members who have spent many years at Dickinson State University and have shown dedication to the institution can continue to be honored members of our university community. Upon retirement, the university may confer emeritus or emeritus status on these exemplary faculty members. There were two faculty members elected by their colleagues to receive emeritus status this spring. I ask that these honored guests please stand. First, Dr. Jim McWilliams, Professor of English, 17 years of student service. And second, Dr. Marianne Marsh, Professor of Nursing, 31 years of service. I also ask that those previously honored as emeriti faculty who are attending commencement today to please stand. Dr. Richard Braun, former Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, and Professor Emeritus of History, and Interim President in 1998, 21 years of service. I would now like to recognize the two students who received this year's Outstanding Graduate Awards. These individuals were honored at a reception held Friday. Please stand and remain standing as you are recognized. First, Mr. Seth Elang. <laughs> Seth is from Billings, Montana and graduated during the winter commencement ceremony with a Bachelor of Science with minors in Chemistry and Leadership. His leadership was shown in a number of ways across the DSU campus. Mr. Elang assisted fellow students as a peer tutor in the Academic Success Center and took part in a reading program at the local elementary schools. Mr. Elang excelled both in the classroom and on the wrestling mat. He wrestled 
for the Blue Hawks for four years, was a mentor of some of his younger teammates, and worked as an assistant wrestling coach this past winter. Mr. Elang made the academic All-American team for four years. He was active in the Theodore Roosevelt Honors Leadership Program, where he was presented with a Noticed Involvement Award in 2017. Mr. Elang is currently employed as a phlebotomist at the Stanford Clinic in Dickinson. He is studying for the MCAT exam and plans to begin applying for medical school in June. His goal is to become a doctor in either cardiology, emergency medicine, or orth orthopedics. His parents are Michael and Shirley Elang of Billings, Montana. Mr. Elang states, I am not peaking, but still rising to two new limits with every sunrise. Congratulations, Seth. Our other outstanding graduate is Ms. Mackenzie Hicks. <laughs> Mackenzie chose Dickinson State University because of its music program, and anyone who knows Mackenzie knows she is musically talented. While at Dickinson State, Mackenzie was part of the Woodwood Ensemble, Chorale, Chamber Singers, Concert Band, and Pep Band. She also served on the Dickinson Community String Ensemble. Ms. Hicks was part of the TRIO Student Support Services and served on the TRIO Advisory Board. She was a member of the Campus Activity Board, on which she held an officer position for four years and was a student representative on the Budget Task Force Committee. After graduation, Mackenzie will be returning to her hometown where she will be a public school music teacher for the 2018-19 academic year. Ms. Hicks states, my time at DSU has helped mold me into the type of teacher I want to be. Congratulations, Mackenzie. At this time, I would like to introduce Dr. Thomas Mitzel, President of Dickinson State University. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> Students, can I have you stand? As we gather here today, hopefully for all of you, this is really the, the most momentous achievement that you've made in your life so far. I truly hope that is correct. But I hope it is not the most momentous achievement you ever make in your entire life. You leave here very well prepared to do a number of wonderful things and pursue each and every one of those. What I'd like for you to do right now is kind of take a look around you, take a look at this arena which has more people in it than I've seen since my arrival at Dickinson State University. And all of these people are gathered here today because of you. No pathway can be wandered alone. No pathway can be, no, no project can be accomplished on your own. So what I'd like for you to do right now, this is your day, as Dr. Wilson mentioned, this is your day. But right now, what I'd like for you to do is thank all the people who helped get you to this point in your life. So give them a round of applause, students, please. And now you're going to be standing quite a bit all day, so go ahead and sit down. So today's class occupies a very special place in the history of Dickinson State University. It was in 1918 that the first classes were held at Dickinson Normal School. Normal school because they taught normal things to teachers so teachers could go out and help educate the next generation. So Dickinson Normal School was begun because there was a huge shortage of teachers in Western North Dakota. 200 positions remained unfilled. 250 other positions were occupied by people who did not have the training to, do, to conduct those positions. So it was decided to start a school in Western North Dakota to help with that teacher shortage. And it's been a battle for the last hundred years. And as our students know, we have yet to win that battle. We've made good grounds. We have yet to win that battle. It's been a great 100 years. We have many teachers in, in the flow of our, of our graduates today. And DSU has been trying very hard to meet the needs of the education of our generations for a long time and you are the penultimate aspect of, of how that works. But in 1918, it was interesting. The, the society was going 
a, a really large paradigm shift as the population was moving from very rural farm life to more of the cities, towns, getting trades. Prior to the shift, most students were born on a family farm, learned about the family farm from parents, grandparents, siblings, neighbors, and much of the time either remained on the family farm or started their own farm. All of their education was accomplished within that life, and it worked really well. But suddenly there was a shift to a more urban environment where you had to learn particular skills and skills to which you may not have been exposed before. But skills that were required now for you to be able to, to earn a living. And Charles Eliot, the president of Harvard from 1869 to 1809, constructed and enacted what we now describe as the modern university. When he gave his inaugural address, he told the story of a father who said, well, what can I do with my boy? For he is not cut out to enter the careers for which elite colleges were preparing them, who is namely a preacher or a learned man. But we needed factories. We needed people who had certain skills. So Charles Eliot actually redesigned higher education around Winslow Taylor scientific labor management. You had to train each employee for a specific task. You had to evaluate the progress and performance of the employee. That didn't happen before. You had to have managers in place to help with training and assessment of employees. So newly instituted into the curriculum to help align with that were elective courses. Prior to Charles Eliot, you could not take an elective course. You were told what you were going to take, when you were going to take it, and how hard you were going to study. We should try that next year, see how well it goes. Put in majors, minors, divisions, credit hours, degree requirements, grades, and the off-wondered bell curve, started by Charles Eliot. For faculty, he professionalized what it is to be a faculty member. And for the first time, faculty had living wages. Prior to that, you had to have your own money, and you went into teaching because you wanted to. Students went because they wanted to. Now it became more of a profession. Gave tenure, sabbaticals, pensions, everything we take for granted now. Was, was brand new back then. And it was a change in education to what they called the learning management, which was different from oratory, debate, and other forms. We still have those. But what they realized was the workforce was shifting enough that education had to travel with it. Well, in the same manner that President Elliott faced the shift of education and workforce needs, we stand at the precipice of another paradigm shift. We are much more technological. Society is much faster moving than it was when DSU began as Dickinson Normal School. And it's globally integrated. Even in Dickinson, North Dakota, we are globally integrated in all of our industry and all of our education. You are exposed to the entirety of what is our Earth. 45% of our workplace tasks in modern society are at risk of being automated. 45% of the work that you are expected to do may become automated. Today's job seekers are, are looking for soft skills, such as strategies, methods, critical thinking, tactics for successful communication, and of course, collaboration. We talk about community, we talk about family, we talk about group learning all the time. It does not go away. When Dr. Wilson told you to continue learning, you will need to continue learning. You need real style and applied learning. Why am I bringing all of this up? Is it to scare you so you never leave? then we get to keep you because you've really had a great senior year. I bring this up because you've been exposed to everything of which you are going to need right here, right now. I'm not saying your life is going to be easy. And if it is going to be easy, you don't want it. You want a life that is going to be challenged. You want a life that, that forces you to grow. But what you're looking for is you're, you're working on open-ended semester projects, term papers, research projects, or other areas building upon liberal arts courses, most powerful type of learning is what you can do there. And I know from speaking to many of you when you were first exposed to open-ended semester projects, term papers, research projects, you weren't extremely happy. 
Some of you questioned whether or not this was what you wanted to do. But what happened as you got toward the end of that project? What happened when you took this open-ended question on day one of the semester, thinking there are 150 different pathways to even try to get there? And at the end, you stood in front of a crowd, and you talked to them about what it was you did. You talked to them about the trials and travails you overcame. There's that sense of pride. There's that sense that you can do this. There's a sense that it went well beyond the classroom learning, which is, is very high-level faculty, don't get mad at me. But you take that classroom le learning, and you've already done this and taken it to such a, a higher level. And we're so proud of you. And those are the skills, along with your classroom learning, that, you, that is going to make you successful in today's ever-changing environment. As Dr. Wilson stated, don't stop learning. One of the best pieces of advice I ever got was from my undergraduate advisor. And he said, read anything and everything. He's an organic chemist. Read anything and everything. Read books, novels, magazines. He said, if you're at a truck stop and you're in the bathroom sitting in the stall, read what's written on the wall. He said, every so often you pick up a snippet of something that's really quite good. So I'd admonish you to do the same. Probably go for more of the classics than, than the bathroom walls. But always continue to read. Always continue to learn. But always care. Theodore Roosevelt once stated, nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. And that is going to be more important as you go out into the society that's awaiting you. Group learning, collaboration, telling people that they're doing well is it too. You want to be the water that raises all ships. Continue to think about that as you go forward. Now, as I mentioned, 45% of all jobs may become automated. But don't be afraid of technology. What is technology? It's a rhetorical question. Don't answer. You don't have to. You're graduating. I'll give some examples of what was once thought of somewhat blasphemous technology. The slide rule was once deemed new technology. And it was not accepted for a number of years because the thought was it would erode students' analytical skills. Did the slide rule erode your analytical skills? I would venture to say not one of you had your skills eroded by a slide rule in the last four years. Slide rule went up right around 1950, 1960. Brand new technology. In 1837, this piece of new technology caused a riot at Yale. Students rioted because of this next new piece of technology. The ever wondrous blackboard. If students didn't have to memorize lecture, if they could write it down, if it was up on the blackboard for them, how were they ever going to cope when they weren't able to carry a blackboard around with them their entire lives? New technology, continually, continually upgrading. Innovation is generally picked up and loved by people between the ages of 15 and 35. Beyond 35, which I am a few years myself, people want technology to slow. The academic term for them is technogrunks. In 1970, in the United States, the average age was 28.1. Technology took off. Technology today is going forward at an ever faster pace. But the average age of a US citizen is 37.8. So what does that mean? It means you are going to be going into a society filled with technogrunks. And you are going to have to help ease them into this transition. And that can be a lot of fun. But that will go outside your typical job description. You will always be learning. How do you teach that 51-year-old president how to use a slide rule? How do you teach him to use a blackboard? And then how do you get him to safely surf the internet? This all kind of comes back together. So don't be afraid of it. You, you need to help smooth that, that transition. But I'd also admonish you to be careful. A survey that went out about four months ago was a company who set up a dummy website to create to assess com consumer gullibility. They wanted to give away free software. And all you had to do was sign the agreement. 98% of the people who visited the site signed the agreement. Within that agreement were the words, I will give up rights to my firstborn child. Be careful with technology. As with any time, there is somebody out there trying to take advantage of you. Be aware. Never be afraid, but be aware. 
when you are into the market, those of you who already have jobs, those of you who are still looking, you're going to do wonderfully well. Google's top five list of qualities, always keep in mind as you're working with your new groups, your new bosses, your new colleagues. The number one quality is to be a good coach. By that they mean help empower others. You know you're good. Make sure those around you are as good as they can be as well. If you surround yourself with a good team, you will always be more successful than if you do not. Second is to have an interest in the well-being of your team. And I pause here because they assume you're going to be working with a team, as you will. The days of a solo career where you get to go into your office, write by yourself or, or, or dictate notes by yourself are gone. You're going to be working with a team. Have interest in the well-being of that team. Be a good communicator. That takes in all aspects. Speaking, writing, physical actions. Also means listening. One of the hardest things to do is to listen. Especially when somebody's telling you something, you know they're wrong. All you want to do is interrupt, then go out for dinner. Listen. Be a good listener. You'll pick up so much more as you do that. And then help your employees or your colleagues with their own professional development. Again, the better is the group around you, the better is are you are going to be. Take advantage of the people around you. Help them be as good as they can. And then have a clear, a clear vision and strategy. You've learned all of these things in your past time here at Dickinson State University. I have no doubt you're going to be as, as successful as, as you can be. Theodore Roosevelt once stated, there are many qualities which we need in order to gain success, but the three above all, for the lack of which no brilliancy and no genius can atone, are courage, honesty, and common sense. Take everything you've learned in the class, everything you've learned in research, everything you've learned in that open-ended project that scared you so badly in the beginning, and wrap it around those three areas. You will always be successful. In the latest survey, survey of individual companies, they would much rather hire, hire a passionate candidate with potential than an uninspired candidate with a sparkling resume. That goes back to the Google traits. It goes back to helping those around you. Be excited about what it is you do. Jump out of bed in the morning, knowing that you're going to have a, a great day. Not every day is going to be easy, but it doesn't mean it can't be good. And when we talk about technology, some of the fastest growing job areas, and you're already understanding this, are not actually in the tech field, but take advantage of new technology. You're not going to be asked to program. You're not going to be asked to write script for, for new for new technology, you're going to be asked if they say, hey, we got this new program, what do you think? You say, yep, put it on my computer, I'll do whatever I can with that. And then I can teach others to do that as well. You're going, they, they, you are going to have to use the newest methodologies. You're, and you're going to have to teach it to others. And I hope you're going to have fun with that. My colleagues are teaching me new things all the time. And hopefully you'll be able to have the same, same aspect. One of the things of which I'm most proud of each and every one of you, and, and, and this is a kudos to our faculty, is that you've been educated to face these open-ended questions. You've been educated to go forward boldly and positively when confronted with uncertainty or vagueness. You weren't given those open-ended questions on just, just to punish you. They trained you very well for a world in which everything is shifting very quickly, where you may never have a clear answer ahead of you, but you will know now how to go forward to get the answer that you need or to get the answer that is best for, for the time. So do that with, with aplomb. Theodore Roosevelt, I'll end this with Theodore Roosevelt once stating, in any moment of decisions, the best thing you can do is the right thing, the next best thing is the wrong thing, and the worst thing you can do is nothing. Keep that in mind, never be afraid so afraid that it freezes you in your seat. Continue to move forward. You know how to do this. You know how to navigate these areas. You're going to be wonderful at it. So I am humbled as president to stand here in front of you today. And I'm so proud of each and every one of you, of your parents and your friends and your colleagues who got you to this point. So class of 2018, today is your day. Congratulations. Thank you all very much.
you're still stuck with me for a few minutes. We now have a musical selection performed by the DSU Chamber Singers, conducted by Dr. Brent Rogers, entitled The Parting Glass. It is an Irish folk song arranged by Audrey Snyder. Please help me welcome them up. very much for that excellent rendition. At 
this time, I'd like to introduce the speaker from the State Board of Higher Education. We are humbled to have him here with us today to share some of his thoughts and thoughts of the State Board, Mr. Nick Hacker. Mr. Hacker is a native of Bismarck, North Dakota. He has a Bachelor of Business Administration and Managerial Finance from the University of North Dakota, and a Certificate in Legislative Leadership from Bohe Institute. He <clears throat> has worked as State Government Affairs Manager for the American Land Title Association and Business Development Manager for Marcel Group Incorporated. In 2004, he was the youngest person in history to be elected to a State Senate where he served North Dakota's District 42 for four years. He is currently the president of the North Dakota Guaranteeing Title Company in Bismarck, North Dakota, and he leads the state's largest title insurance and real estate closing company with 100 employees across 10 locations. As a member of the State Board of Higher Education, his term began on July 1 of 2015. So he came in about the same time as did I. And what I will say personally is I've greatly enjoyed working with Nick. He has been extremely helpful and, and a great friend to Dickinson State University and education across the entire state of North Dakota. So please help me welcome Mr. Nick Hacker to the podium. Thank you for that kind introduction, Dr. Mitzel, President Mitzel. And uh, wow, what an exciting day today is. Um, and uh, good morning. Normally I say good afternoon, but it feels like afternoon for me because of this time change for driving over from Bismarck. Uh, but good afternoon, uh, President Mitzel, faculty, staff, family, friends, and most importantly, parents and the class of 2018 University, uh, uh, Dixon State University Blue Hawks. First, I want to start with the parents. Thank you for entrusting your children at Dickinson State University when they were, most of them were probably 17 or 18 years old. Uh, thank you for entrusting them and for investing in their future as they walk across this stage as young adults entering their professional lives. Thank you uh, on behalf of the state of North Dakota as well as Dickinson State. But to this fine group of Dickinson State graduates, today is your day. On behalf of the State Board of Higher Education, let me congratulate you on your educational achievements. I always look forward to visiting campuses, but especially this one, DSU. Uh, the university has achieved many successes as it overcomes the challenge to transform and meet the needs of its students. DSU is one of the opportunity engines for Dickinson, and it's a gateway to the state's success. As you can see today, much of that success is very exciting and the community has lots to celebrate with the class of 2018. I'm thankful for the opportunity to be here and to meet with many of the people making this possible, including your steadfast leader, the faculty, staff, and students. Faculty like Dr. Harris, who I met this morning, a professor of computer science and math. He's been teaching here for 23 years, uh, believe it or not. And what an, what an awesome, awesome asset that the DSU has. The faculty really make and create the fabric of any institution. They lead you to the success of today to walk across this stage. It's the board's responsibility to make higher education in North Dakota the best it can be. And you can see that vision in action here today. Thank you for placing your trust in us and working together to create the best higher education system possible. We applaud all of you and your accomplishments, and we celebrate the high quality education provided by DSU. As you walk up on this stage, remember, this is one part of the foundation for building a successful future. A successful future, uh, such as a prior employee of our companies who walked across this stage, and I got to be the commencement speaker, Nathan, who his undergraduate was in human resources. Two years later, he's the director of human resources of a medical facility in Bismarck with over 100 employees. That is success. Every step you take from here and what you've learned both in and out of the classroom will help you build on that foundation. 
By pursuing and completing a college education, you've equipped yourselves for future success. You've gained, gained a great deal of knowledge, learned how to think critically, and how to communicate effectively. You've also learned to show up. Woody Allen puts it, showing up is 80% of success. These tools and your drive to show up will serve you well in your life and your career. I'm glad you chose to continue your education in North Dakota. The state is thriving, literally thousands of open jobs across the state for talented individuals just like yourself. There are numerous opportunities from agriculture, energy, technology, healthcare, and education and more. And we continue to have ongoing partnerships with the business community and DSU continues to work diligently to ensure students like yourself are fully prepared to meet those workforce demands. I encourage you to take the next step and embrace the opportunities, certain or not, that lie before you as a college graduate. Uncertainty exists in all facets of our lives, and today is no different for many of you. But don't let the uncertainty of the future cause you to lose sight of your dreams, where you are headed, and how you will get there. As Michael J. Fox says in Back to the Future, if you're going to build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? We have no idea what life will give us, but whatever it is, go in style and do your best. By coming to DSU, showing up, and jumping into your DeLorean, you are ready to pursue a career or continue your education. I trust your work and your dreams will make North Dakota and the world a better place. Congratulations on a job well done. Thank you again, Mr. Hacker. That was wonderful, and we really enjoy your coming out to visit the campus on this day. I'd like, at this point, to introduce the Distinguished Educator of the Year, Ms. Amy Cass. Amy Cass is from Hayward, Wisconsin, and has lived in New England, North Dakota for the past seven years with her family. She earned her MBA and her Bachelor of Arts degree in accounting from Lakeland College in Wisconsin. She has worked in public accounting, in the Finance Department of Healthcare Facilities, and as an adjunct accounting faculty member at the Wisconsin Indian Head Technical College. She began working at DSU in 2012, where she is an assistant professor of accounting and is an advisor to the Business Club, SIFE, and the Phi Beta Lambda. She enjoys working with her students in the classroom and in the CPAE, as well as in the various club activities held each semester. Ms. Cass will introduce our 2018 commencement speakers, Ms. Carly Bodich and Ms. Mackenzie, Mackenzie Hicks. So please help me welcome Ms. Amy Cass to the podium. Thank you, Dr. Mitzel. Our first commencement speaker is Ms. Carly Bodich. Carly Bodich is the daughter of Ryan, uh, Ryan and Jolene Bodich. Her hometown is Sylvania, Saskatchewan, Canada. Carly will graduate with the Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Studies with a business and marketing option and a minor in leadership. During her time at DSU, Carly has been on the DSU rodeo team, the Collegiate Farm Bureau, and was a Theodore Roosevelt Honors Leadership Scholar. This past year, Carly worked with the DSU Heritage Foundation. Outside of DSU, Carly coaches figure skating, helps with 4-H events, and continues her education through leadership and agronomy workshops. Carly plans to attend equine chiropractic school, travel, and then return to her family's farm. college experience, we all grow and adapt to the people we are today. We all have different stories, but our experiences are similar. Around four years ago, we came to Dickinson State University as wide-eyed freshmen ready to tackle the college life. We may have come from an hour down the road, 
or another country. But either way, watching your mom wave goodbye from your tiny to long window brought a tear to your eye. And then it began, your new life in the bright lights of Dickinson, North Dakota. It started as being referred to as Canada because no one knew my actual name. People giggled when I said pasta instead of pasta or semi instead of semi. We ate too many ice cream cones at the cafeteria. We dreaded Burger Monday. We were excited about our first Blue Hawk football game and DSU homecoming. We tried to get something to eat after 10 o'clock, but everything was closed. So we microwaved a pizza in our dorm room and woke up everyone in the room surrounding. Our classes were manageable, and getting a good GPA or even on the dean's list was easily achievable. We called our high school friends and told them about the fun and weird people we were meeting at Paragon Bowl and the West River Rec Center. I joined Range Club and competed in my first college rodeo. The feeling of putting on my Blue Hawk vest and representing my school was something I cannot describe. It was eye-opening to see the caliber at which the college rodeo circuit competition was at. And in the blink of an eye, it was over. You had survived your first year of college. Not as hard as you had thought. And as you packed up to go home for the summer, you were actually going to miss this place. At home, you were asked how college was going. You told people about your favorite professors, like Dr. Stefan for his corny jokes, and Dr. Dragseth for her enthusiasm. You explained about a million times where Dickinson, North Dakota was, and yes, it was a four-year school, and no, it wasn't NDSU. Sophomore year was great. As hard as you fought, you had to stay in the dorms, but you met new friends and reunited with old ones. Classes got a little harder, and you probably had to learn how to study. You probably learned where the library was this year, and maybe even the tutoring center. You got to poke fun and laugh a little at the freshmen as they looked lost and afraid, but then you felt bad and lent them a hand. Your sports team starts to feel like your family. You've made a few close friends you plan to live with next year. This year you get to start taking on leadership opportunities in clubs and organizations. I got involved in Farm Bureau and got accepted into the TR Honors Program. These programs led to opportunities like national conferences and great role models. And just like that, it was year three. I met Dr. Mitzel, the new president of DSU, and was excited about the direction he was taking things and his willingness to listen to students and their concerns. This year, I began to feel part of the community, recognizing people at the grocery store and building relationships with community members. You feel at home at DSU. You're asked to mentor the new students on your team or tutor a friend in class. And you think, no way, I'm not grown up enough for that. Your classes require you to be super engaged, and you work hard for your grades. You're proud of your work. For some, that means the dean's list, and for some, hey, C's get degrees. I took on the role of Farm Bureau President, and I'm so thankful for the opportunities it has given me to grow as a leader and a person. It's allowed me to engulf myself in my passion for agriculture advocacy and bring others in to share the experience. You head home for summer and you have an internship. It's your first real job and it's intimidating, but you end up doing well and enjoying it. Your mom starts going through your stuff, thinking maybe it's time to get rid of some of it. You realize it's your last summer at home and that seems crazy. You cherish your moments with your buddies from high school over the summer and you head back to Dickinson for your last year of school. Senior year came so quickly. They tell you a million times that it goes by fast, but you never truly understand until you're sitting here now. The last time I competed in each rodeo arena was bittersweet. Looking back, it's great to see how much my hard work has paid off. From a timid freshman to a rodeo athlete that can qualify for the top 10 short round in two events, there are so many people that have helped me out along the way. Our college sports careers will be something we will cherish forever. We have improved so much. Our schooling has prepared us for our dream jobs, and we are ready to take life by the horns. We feel like if we made it through our senior project presentations, we could probably make it through anything life throws our way. Thank you to Mr. Toby Stroh, Dr. Chip Bowen, and Ms. Annika Plummer, and the professors in other departments that put up with our procrastination, frustration, and even tears, and constantly remind us that we will get through it. 
This year, the new Heritage Foundation building opened, and I was so fortunate to work there as a work study. Pam, Ty, Alicia, and Amanda, thank you for being such wonderful people and working so hard to make DSU a great school. I'm so thankful for the relationships and memories I have made. And that's that. We've done it. This school has built us into educated, mature, and accomplished young adults. We've made lifelong best friends and relationships. We've found mentors that we will call for advice 10 years down the road. Now we start the next chapter in our lives. And whether you have that planned out to a T, or you're like me and don't know what comes next, that's okay. Because DSU has prepared you for whatever comes your way. We will all choose different paths, and hopefully we will stay in touch. But no matter where you go, or what you do, you can always be proud to be a Blue Hawk. Congratulations, fellow classmates. I wish you the best in the future. Hawks are up. The other student speaker is Ms. Mackenzie Hicks. Uh, Mackenzie is the daughter of Leanne and Scott Fitch of Headinger, North Dakota, and will be receiving a Bachelor of Science degree in composite music education. During her time at DSU, Ms. Hicks participated in uh, numerous music ensembles, campus activities board, NACME, and was an RA for three years. After graduation, Ms. Hicks is moving back to Headinger to teach K-12 music in Headinger Public School. came to DSU fall of 2013. I never would have expected my life to change as much as it did. DSU held a lot of firsts for me and many challenges. With these challenges came check marks in life which challenged me and helped me grow. These checks in life we face can represent the challenges and successes of our stories. A joke we have in my family is I've been singing as long as I've been talking. My passion for music has always been with me through the good and the bad times. However, for the longest time, I did not want to go into music. I actually wanted to be an astronomer. Then high school came and I realized I was terrible at science. I was blessed with the opportunity to tour seven different countries in Europe for 16 days. And it was there that I found my love for music and wanting to teach. When the music tour was over, I started looking into colleges and what degrees I could get with music. I told my mom, Dickinson State University is not where I want to go. For a long time, it seemed like everyone from Hedinger came here, and this small town girl wanted to get as far away as possible. At my top three universities picked in the state, with DSU pick, being pick number three. I toured my top three schools, and my number one school was kicked off the list. It was far too big for me. It came down to DSU and the University of Mary, both wonderful schools with great music programs. Finally, I chose DSU because I wanted the smaller class sizes and more opportunities to work one-on-one -on -one with my professors. Check one for DSU and zero for Mackenzie. So my journey to DSU began as a composite music education major. After talking with family and friends, I came to the conclusion I should not get signed up for too many clubs when I first started school. Two weeks later, I was part of the Campus Activities Board, elected as secretary, involved in choir, chamber singers, band, clarinet ensemble, NAFME, trio, and some more. Another mark for DSU, I'm still at zero. Originally, I did not want to be an RA. Having to be confrontational and actually talk to people was and is not my forte. But my freshman year, I had the best RAs I could ask for, checking in to make sure I was doing well, inviting me to programs, and just to hang out with them. These girls were the encouragement I needed to apply. I was hired and stayed on staff for three years, and some of my greatest memories were made while being an RA. DSU 3, Mackenzie 0. 
I knew being a music major meant I was going to be busy with practicing, rehearsals, and my other classes. My first semester, I started out at 16 credits and thought, this was good. Spring semester of my freshman year, I took 22 credits. That was just about my breaking point with being busy with school, work, and practice. I told myself I would stick with 18 credits tops for each semester. DSU now gets four, and I'm left with zero, because three out of my 10 semesters here at DSU had 18 credits or less. Coming from small town North Dakota, I never really thought I could make a difference on campus. I did not think I made an impression on so many students and faculty here. That realization came to me when I was selected for the 2016 Homecoming Queen and just yesterday being awarded the Outstanding Graduate Award. Two things I never dreamed would have happened. The SU5, Mackenzie Zero. One of my biggest dreams as a performer was to sing at Carnegie Hall. Well, thanks to DSU, that dream came true March 2017. Experiencing New York, seeing The Lion King on Broadway, and crossing it off my bucket list made every second worth it. DSU 6, Mackenzie Zero. Those who have heard me sing know that I love those high notes and am a soprano at heart. Never would I have thought that my time at DSU, I would have been singing alto for a semester. It was different. I'll stick with my high notes and melody any day. But again, it helped me grow as a musician. DSU 7, Mackenzie 0. I truly believe DSU has one of the best education programs in the state. When I first knew I wanted to go into music education, I told professors and myself I did not want to teach elementary. I was terrified of these small children and had no clue what to do. Thanks to the ed program, I was able to sit in on elementary classrooms and teach lessons. During my time student teaching, I realized that these small, terrifying children were actually adorable. Teaching elementary soon became one of my favorites. DSU 8, Mackenzie 0. As I started classes and going through each semester, people back home started asking if I would ever move back to Hedinger to teach. The immediate answer, no, no, and no. Well, then the current music teacher started talking about retirement, and the school administration was asking if I would consider moving back. The seed was planted, and I applied and was offered the position. It took me a couple days to reflect upon myself, talk to my mom, and cry, talk to DSU faculty, and cry some more. I realized Hedinger would be a great place to start. Plus, living with my sister is going to be cheap rent. DSU 9, Mackenzie 0. I never saw myself as one to make and give a speech. But again, here I am presenting the speech at commencement. DSU 10, Mackenzie 0. Now these scores may look like DSU is the winner, but I see it as DSU plus McKenzie equals 100, making me a winner, but I'm not alone. Fellow graduates sitting in the chairs in front of me, students still attending classes, family and friends about to see your graduates walk the stage, faculty and staff here to see your students walk across the stage and maybe say goodbye for the final time. DSU alumni and special guests. We are all winners today and DSU is that common factor which makes us these winners. Thank you to everyone who has pushed me to get to this point. The ladies in TRIO, the music faculty and education faculty, and of course my family. Without your continuous support, I never would have been up here to give this speech. Thank you. At this time, we will move to the portion of our program where we recognize, honor, and celebrate our graduates. Present at our ceremony today is a professional photographer who will take a photograph of each graduate as they receive their diplomas from President Mitzel. So don't forget to stop and smile when you sh shake his hand, okay? 
These photos will be made available to the graduates. Our Director of Academic Records and University Registrar, Ms. Kathleen Meyer, will read the names of the candidates as they come forward and approach the platform. On behalf of the faculty whom I represent, we extend to you the candidates for graduation. Our most sincere congratulations on completion of your degree requirements. Again, on behalf of the faculty, we also congratulate the families of the graduates. As you will note, the candidates are wearing blue robes and blue or gray stoles. A gray stole signifies attainment of a Dickinson State University's bachelor's degree, while a gray signifies the attainment of the Dickinson State University associate's degree. Also of note are the cords or medallions worn by our honors graduates. Their names and honors recognitions are listed in the program and are designated by the gold or silver gold cords or silver medallions they wear. The gold cords symbolize academic honors and the silver medallions designate Theodore Roosevelt honors distinction. Other cords, stoles, and medallions indicate other memberships. Dr. Mitzel, the academic records of these candidates have been examined and they have fulfilled the requirements for graduation for the appropriate academic degree as set forth by the North Dakota State Board of Higher Education and Dickinson State University. Therefore, I recommend awarding the appropriate degree that each candidate may enjoy the rights, honors, and privileges pertaining to that degree. Big step. By the authority vested in me by the State Board of Higher Education and the State of North Dakota, I hereby confer upon you the academic degree which you have completed. <laughs> Graduates, congratulations. <laughs> you need to stand. I was supposed to do that before, so everybody up. I don't have to redo that, just make sure you tell people you're standing. But what I do need for you to do at this time is to move your tassel to the other side of your hat. And now you may all be seated. Uh, platform by row and you'll receive your diplomas and we will continue to go forward with the show. Congratulations. Carly Jean Boric. Mackenzie Brissett Hicks. Brittany Marie Berger. Tori Joanne Dixon. Brianna K. Dolacek. Kayla Christine Helbling. Abby Lynn Houghton. Lexi Del Rey Nistler. Magdalene Paige Rouser.
Melissa Me Schatz. Mackenzie Lynn Bassett. David Allen Garrick. Megan Noel Hoffman. Victoria Ruth Johnson. Brianna Larray Craft. Jamie Lynn Mattis. Blake Robert Schwagler. Christina Elizabeth Feel. Urja Ariel. Emily Rose Bendish. Madison Renee Beckler. Catherine Brandbold. Kendra Cox. Brittany Jo Decker. Roshan Gotham. Kristen Aileen Greenwood. Shelby Joel Gustafson. JC Janelle Howard. Alisa Robin Jocelyn. <laughs> Michaela Kennedy Meyer. <laughs> Zachary John Miller. Billy Jean Peterman. <laughs> Shaylee May Singleton. <laughs> Dylan Dean Scable. Nicholas Dominic Field. Ryan J. Abbott.
I'm sure. <laughs> Levi Edward Bassett. Aaron Matthew Berg. Christopher Max Brown. Terrell Antonio Butler. Ryan Nicholas Clark. Cade Taylor Coles. Allison Marie Evanenko. Janelle L. Fitzgerald. <laughs> Kayla Ann Fleck. <laughs> Daniel Evan Garza. Friad Zaleka Gebrahana. Wyatt Benjamin German. Sean Paul Getchell. Michaela Jean Gorman. <laughs> Ashley Marie Gullickson. <laughs> Jennifer Ann Yonner. Drew Evan Johnson. <laughs> Jesper Douglas Jones. <laughs> Greta Patricia Clennert. William Frederick Knudsen. <laughs> Travis Dustin Keenig. <laughs> Anthony Jordan Locke. Ellen Lynn Millerhove. <laughs> Sagan Reese Osborne. <laughs> Callie May Post. Jasmine Banda Provatsky. <laughs> Mary, 
Megan Carol Ratey. Adiza Bashur Sambal. Cody Allen Sattler. Michael Anthony Share. Heidi Marie Sora. David Taylor Mackenzie Marie Baker. Oladriwaju Kosoko. Marcus Joseph Dietrich. Nana Nakashima. Urshanri. Urshana Shakari Chandler. Karina Lauren Hess. Christine Leanne Hetzel. Casey Lynn Pearson. Parker Joseph Robinson. Simon Gerald Root. Heather Lynn Bird. Gabrielle Anna Marie Sickler. (laughs) 
Megan Ione Bennis. Saida Suna Bishop. <laughs> Teresa Jane Buck. <laughs> Kayla Bethany Jacobs. Miranda Lee Marks. Emily Miyama. Kristen Elizabeth Nelson. Reyesa Lee Oderman. Virginia Marie Sickler. Emily Veronica Wolf. Jacob Michael Cush. Wilson J. Alerte. Dante James Clark. Carter James Gallo. Connor Randall Getchy. Brenna. Shauna Lynn Sprague. Tyler Nicole Wagendorf. Michael J. Wigert. Reagan Williams. <laughs> Hannah Dakota Ozick. <laughs> Sarah May Navajo. Carissa Lynn Swick. Carolina Rodriguez. Stephanie Andres Witty. Chance McCall Glass. Yeah. 
Rory James Irwin. All right, this will probably be the last time you ever listen to anything I say. So let's stand up one more time. proud of everything you have done. It's my pleasure to present the class of 2018. Let's give them one more round of applause. And you may be seated. It is my pleasure at this time to introduce Ms. Alicia Erickson from the DSU Alumni Foundation. Ms. Alicia Erickson is a 2000 graduate of Dickinson State University. She is originally from Dogmar, Montana, and she worked in the Office of Enrollment Services from 2000 to 2011, and is currently the Director of Alumni Relations. Please help me welcome Alicia to the podium. On behalf of the Dickinson State University Alumni Association and the DSU Heritage Foundation, I'm proud to be among the first to say you have successfully achieved what you set forth to do when you first applied to Dickinson State University. Congratulations. For For the graduates, I want you to think back to your first day on campus as a Blue Hawk. Think about how much you have grown as a person since then. The independence and determination you have gained in that time is something to smile about. For anyone who knows me, you know that I bleed blue and gray. I love Dickinson State University, and I will always be a Blue Hawk. As I say those words, I feel a sense of pride and accomplishment. As I look out at the beaming smiles in the crowd, I know that they feel it too. My hope for you, graduates, is that you feel the same love for your alma mater as I do. This commencement exercise has become a tradition. Even though the school opened in 1918, the first commencement wasn't held at Dickinson State Normal School until July 29, 1920. That makes this commencement exercise on May 12, 2018 special because you are graduating during Dickinson State's centennial year. That's a legacy built upon this foundation. Many successful alumni have graduated from this institution. Scott Molander, an entrepreneur from a small town in Northwest North Dakota named Crosby. He started LIDS, the cab company. He then got involved with BSN Sports and currently serves on the board for the DSU Heritage Foundation. Dr. Tamar Wright Rodney, who followed her boyfriend to DSU from Jamaica. She later broke up with him, but not before she went on to become the Student Nurse of the Year and Outstanding Graduate in 2008. She is at John Hopkins University conducting research. Perhaps one of my favorite stories are those of the alumni that leave Dickinson State as a graduate, but come back to work as a professor or a staff member. Dr. Holly Gerke, Dr. Joshua Steffen, Thad O'Donnell, Pete Stanton, Dr. Mary Ann Marsh, Audrey Kuchinko, Lucy Meyer, and that's only a few of the many names. I know out of this class there are going to be teachers, business professionals, nurses, and writers. I hope to also see doctors, political activists, pastors, entrepreneurs, and people who want to continually work to make the world a better place to live. 
As an alum, I want to hear your story. I want you to reach out and contact us when something exciting happens. Whether it is a marriage, the birth of a child, or a job promotion, I want to be able to share your story for future generations of Blue Hawks. Let your story be told. You will always be welcomed at 291 Campus Drive. Come and see us in the building that screams blue and gray pride at the DSU Heritage Foundation. Whether it's on a Monday or 10 years from now, our door will always be open for you. As you pick, as you begin to pack up your belongings to begin your, your next chapter in your life story, hang on to some of those crazy DSU t-shirts. One day you will wish you have had worn that old worn t-shirt and stop by and see me in Wienbergen Hall because I'll have a brand new DSU t-shirt to hand out to you today. Take lots of pictures at some of the key points around campus. Pull out your cell phone and take a selfie at commencement. You only get one shot. Go ahead, take that shot. I don't mind if you want to take a selfie right now. Take a family picture in front of the Dickinson State University gate by the Student Center. Stand proudly by your flag in the flag plaza. You'll be able to look at these photos from time to time, no matter where you are. Keep in touch with your teammates, classmates, and professors. You never know when you may be having a bad day and you just need to hear their words of wisdom or encouragement to put a smile on your face. Even though this chapter in your life story comes to a close, please remember that no matter where you are, you will always be a Blue Hawk. Congratulations. Thank you, Alicia, for that wonderful talk. A uh, few reviews for the recessional instructions and announcements. We're getting toward the end, so we're all going to be departing soon. Uh, but we will, let's go through some, some of these items. So for the recessional, I do ask that the jazz ensemble commence immediately following the official closing of the commencement ceremony. The platform party will lead the recessional, followed by the faculty, graduates, and then guests. All remain standing during the recessional, if you would, please. The faculty and graduates will recess back through the Scott Gymnasium as they entered during the processional. Guests, please proceed through the curtain or through the doors of the Scott Gymnasium to the reception for all graduates and friends in Weinberg and Gymnasium immediately following the commencement ceremony. Once you arrive in Weinberg, we will have food and beverage, and you will note uh, we will have DSU department banners placed throughout the gym to help you locate faculty and fellow graduates to so take advantage of those areas. And now I invite Dr. Carmen Wilson to the podium to uh, carry on a tradition that we have done each and every commencement since 1920. Before we sing the alma mater, I'd just like to thank the people who uh, helped us create this wonderful celebration because it certainly takes an entire community. Led by our commencement committee, uh, our registrar, Ms. Kathy Meyer and her entire staff, our admission staff, our physical facilities staff, our student ushers and musicians, and of course our Trek staff that have uh, provide a live web stream for our loved ones, including my own, who couldn't be here today to celebrate with us. So now I would ask that you please rise and we will sing the alma mater. Wait. 
Congratulations, Centennial graduates. It's my pleasure to announce the 2018 DSU commencement for my second and final time is now closed.